naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. All right, all right. <clears throat> Get ready to start here. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm Iggy Garcia. This is Iggy Garcia Live, episode 33 of my podcast. Um, for those of you who've tuned in before, welcome to the show. And for those of you who are new, welcome to the show. Um, once a month, I usually do a show here, two shows with Iggy Garcia Live. Um, on Mondays, I have my other show that I do uh, with uh, Adriana Arts. We we team up on that show. Um, but um, today, I'm the solo guy. So I kind of do my own little podcast, and I talk about different things. So <clears throat> just bear with me here, just trying to get everything lined up. I've got a live stream going, and I also have it going on Blog Talk Radio uh, with Insights Radio for those of you who are listening, and on Sprecher for those of you who are listening as well. Make sure that I have everything geared up and lined up. So I want to say hi to Todd. I want to say hi to Jagger. I want to say hi to Rachel, Emily, Rose, Frank, and Angel. Welcome to the show. Hopefully you can stick around for a, while, a little bit. If you can't, no problem. This will be pre-recorded, and this will be recorded, and you'll be able to watch it. This is live, though, so I am live, so I'm bound to make a few mistakes, a few little errors. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, the butterfly effect and cause and effect, and I guess karma would be thrown in there, too, and probably chaos theory as well. So if those of you who are interested in that kind of stuff and what that means, um, there are some people – It is, it is something that has been – dubbed you know uh, a law per se the law of the butterfly effect which was um kind of discovered back in the in the late 60s i believe if i'm not if i'm not you know correct there i'm not sure i think but um i think the guy was named my mind slipping now edward lorenz i think is who it was been he was kind of a he's a meteorologist and he had like this you know weather for uh patterns and formulas and things and programs he put them together and and um, he um, kind of talked about stuff. But before we get into the show about the butterfly effect, we always start, you know, our show off with burning a little sage, you know, kind of clear the energy. So I'm going to burn a little sage here. If you can hear me, let me know. Give me a thumbs up for those of you who are listening on the live stream. It's important to... Uh, know that you can hear me can you hear me cool awesome all right so we're going to take the smoke into our eyes so we can see all the beautiful things we're going to take the smoke into our ears so we can hear all the beautiful things take the smoke into our mouth so we can speak all the beautiful things we're going to pass the smoke all through our body through our spirit through our soul so we go one with all the beautiful things in the universe and may the highest purpose be served and thank you great spirit thank you universe Help us get into the right track and the right frame of mind of what we want to talk about. All right. Love this page. It's beautiful. All right. So let's just take a second to just focus. You know, we're kind of in the just past midweek. Now we're going into the close to the weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. So just take a little moment to, you know, kind of reflect on your week here. You know, what you've accomplished, what maybe you haven't accomplished, your goals, things that maybe you've fallen short. So take a second to just think about, you know, what happened Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, those, those things are gone now. And those things have moved into, you know, the past, but yet we're in, moving into the present moment, into the now now. But some things we still have to work out that we've left back in the past. So for those of you who are working on those kind of things right now and just kind of stay focused, take a couple moments just to take a couple of deep breaths. And exhale. Inhale again. So anytime you feel kind of stressed out a little bit, you know, just remembering to breathe is important. I know we breathe, you know, 
on a subconscious level, super subconscious level. We just kind of do it naturally. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's awesome. So I want to, again, welcome everybody who's joined the show. Lisa, Tim, Mike, Terry, and John, John P., who's also known as JP, a kid I grew up with, a uh, pretty nice guy. And it's good to see him on the show, like doing JP. But, um, yeah, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, just, uh, just, you know, theories and ideas and things about, you know, cause and effect, the butterfly effect. I know for some people, they don't really buy into that stuff. And then some other people are really full-fledged into it. And um, some people, some people believe they even falls into the category of conspiracy theory. And I'm not sure if that is true or if not, you know, it's, it's all a matter of opinion at this point. But what I want the reason I wanted to talk about this was because I find it really interesting every, every day that we live our lives, every day we move into these new versions of ourselves, we keep moving forward and forward and progressing into, you know, different avenues of who we see and how we think we are and how we um, interpret and perceive ourselves. And um, how maybe our decisions were affected by somebody else's decision by a decision we made or by decisions made, you know, all a big broad all around us, you know, by, you know, government or somebody who's, you know, we're close to us or, you know, us, you know, to our children. And um, I find it really interesting because in the theory of, of the butterfly effect, it's it in a nutshell, it's pretty much like the flap of the wings of a butterfly causes, you know, wind to kick up and it causes dust to move and it causes the particles, minute particles to move. And these particles move through and through and through the, you know, on and on and it cascades into the world basically. So when I thought about that, I was thinking, you know, but not only does a butterfly affect, you know, something, but also a mosquito, uh, you know, a cockroach, you know, a mouse that runs across our path, us, you know, our decisions. So they they just dubbed it the, the butterfly effect because that's just how they wanted to call it. You know, it could be called anything. Cause and effect has something very similar, and you know, it has a similar thing. There's a cause, it causes an effect. So maybe they go hand to hand some way or somehow, or maybe they don't. And karma is, you know, there's different versions of karma. Karma is one of those things where, you know, where something is, you know, played out and then it causes an effect in a certain way. Some people call it good karma. Some people call it bad karma. You know, karma is, is a very touchy word for some people because some people use it, you know, very loosely. You know, they kind of throw it around like, hey, hey, what's up? You know, it's like, oh, you're going to get bad karma, instant karma, blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to talk more about, you know, the the subtleties in life, the things that happen, the things that move, the things that move uh you know, different things in our life. For example, you know, I'm going to give this example of uh, Adolf Hitler for that. Um, that I did some research on. There was a man named Henry Tandy. Okay, in World War One, and this man actually had the opportunity to actually shoot Adolf Hitler because he crossed his path, and um, he chose not to. And Adolf Hitler nodded at him and kept walking. So. This is uh, someone's cause, which causes an effect, which is a butterfly effect. And at this particular moment, this juncture in time, everything changed. What if this young man would have shot Adolf Hitler? What would have been the results of, you know, the world today? Where have all these people perished? Would there have been World War II? I do believe there would have been a World War II. It would have happened. I think some things just are meant to be and they're destined to be, but how that plays out is different. So this man had the opportunity to, you know, take another human life and, um, you know, actually, you know, keep things from, you know, escalating the way they did, but he didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't realize, but that decision did change the world. That decision did affect the world. Is that something that is, you know, Hitler's destiny? Was that something Mr. Tansy's, uh, uh, you know, was that in their destiny to meet that way? But that happens all the time. Just think about all the things in the world. All the times happen. Think about things that happen to you. Just making a right turn or a left turn. You know, if you would have just waited. Sometimes our intuition kicks in. You know, our, 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 our higher mind helps us and goes, who wait, need to slow down. And then all of a sudden, a car just runs the red light. I don't know how many times that's happened to me. And I don't know how many times that's happened to you guys, 
but I find it really, 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 really interesting. These, these, these little subtleties, these little things that we can actually just change and cause the world to around us to completely morph. And I think that's why the butterfly, that's why they call it the butterfly flip because it things morph and they things, these things change and they cause things to come out in a different outcome. There are different, different things that play out throughout the universe. There are multiple, multiple, you know, outcomes for different things. So constantly things are overlaying, overlapping, and things are always, you know, changing and things are always, you know, progressing into a new uh, existence. Um, things do happen. That's just the normality of life. There is things you, even if you lived in a vacuum, things happen even with you being in that vacuum or not participating outside of that vacuum, things do happen. And so, what I'm just proposing here is, you know, think about the little things that in your life that made the biggest, the big difference. You know, when you decided to do something and then maybe you regretted it after the fact and you knew better. I mean, I don't know how many times we've done that where we just didn't go with our gut instinct and we kind of, you know, progressed either way. Or how many times we were talked into something we really truly didn't want to do, but we did. And that one little decision just alters our whole universe into the next moment. Because when we move into pieces and parts into the moment, you know, we're constantly changing. We have, we can only really control what's in front of us or what's played and what cards are dealt to us at that particular moment and how we respond and how we react in that moment. So it's, it's not, it's easy now to go back and study history and go, okay, this happened, this played out, and this person would have made that decision, things could have played out. If this person would have done this, things could have played out. But how many countless way, things have been like that? You know, how many countless things have we, you know, seen in history or just even through our own families, you know, through our friends, just that poor decision? But sometimes decisions are made way back, way, way back in time. You know, what if the founding fathers didn't want to fight? What if they decided that they were just going to, you know, do whatever they do and just comply with the king? History would be completely different today. Everything would be completely in a whole different realm. You know, I find it really fascinating, you know, just the, the small thin threads that we ride sometimes in life. Those little decisions that we make or don't make. Now, in the same token, when we make a decision, sometimes we don't see the effects that it plays out from that. There's times where we make decisions that affect other people, and we don't consciously necessarily mean to change things, but they do happen. But now, here we are in a, in a, in a very interesting time now. We're real, in a really, really interesting time because we have new leadership, and we have new opportunities to do things, and yet – what we de what those people decide will affect how we will progress into our futures, you know, either in a financial financial way, you know, religious way, social social way, you know, how we deal with other nations and countries. Those those things will affect us. Now, we can do the best we can right now. When somebody else makes our decision, for example, if government decides they're going to do things like this, we also had a chance. We also have a choice to make decisions as well and how we want to perceive that, and how we want to receive that. There's a lot of us who are observers who are, or, you know, you know, they observe And the power of, of observing is just as powerful as actually engaging. A lot of people don't realize it, but also being an observer is very powerful. For those of you who study quantum physics and understand quantum physics in, in the realities of quantum physics and in the un, untapped things of quantum physics, you know, the observer can actually change how things are affected just by observing it and watching it. You know, they really don't truly know exactly how that works, but it works. Just the observer, it's almost like us sending, you know, untapped energy or energy towards the thing that we want to see. You know, so I can get into that's a whole nother another show, but I, we can talk about that later. But I find it very interesting that even the observer is just as powerful as a person who just stands by, you know, who's active or involved. Because here's an example. If there's an accident and someone gets, you know, there's cars crash, no one gets hurt, but you know, no one, no one gets hurt. Everybody's fine. But yet someone videotapes that. 
videotapes that you know that that event through the lens of their perception and then another person also does that you know but none of these people helped out none of these people went to necessarily go and help but yet they go and they post it on facebook Oh, I saw this accident, blah, blah, blah. You, you've you all seen it. You've all seen videos where people have, you know, been cars been flipped, blah, 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 you know, sharks attacking people, whatever. You've seen it all. But somebody's there filming. Instead of helping, they're actually filming. I don't know how you would help in a shark attack, but anyhow. But the point is that they their observation by videoing that and then posting that does change and does affect. So the people who watch that at some way or another are affected by that. And then when they're affected through feelings, emotions, you know, and it goes deep inside them. And so maybe at that point, they can see forward into the future. Well, maybe I should be more careful. Maybe you should be more attentive versus, you know, we're so, you know, right now we're in a time where we're so connected. We're so, we're all connected within this magical web of technology. And, you know, for some people it's, it's very powerful. And for some people, it's very, very dangerous. And for some people, it's it's a nuisance. And for some people, you know, they use it for business. Regardless if we want it or not, it's there. And now it affects us regardless if we want to use it or not. You know, we either connect or not connect. It does affect us some way. You know, technology spreads information quicker. So that cause and that cause moves into an effect and that effect moves into a cause and vice versa, moving around, you know, even if you weren't partaking, partaking in it, you know, it is being used. Te- technology now, we, we can talk to somebody across the world in a matter of, you know, a click of a button on the mouse, you know, opening up a screen like this. And so for those of you who are watching this, you know, what, this this technology live stream technology didn't come out maybe three or four or five years ago maybe at most maybe now it's a little bit better from when it was back then now somebody somebody's idea somebody's technology in their brain their computer functioning working you know and progressing and creating this one person who makes this decision to do something completely different and step out of the norm and to create something that you know can connect us all now there's thousands of people like myself who have their own little shows, their own podcast shows, their own little radio stations, their own little internet, you know, you know, blogs. You know, there was a time where people would laugh at other people when they talked about, the, I'm going to have my own show, my own blah, blah. Even the big name, you know, people who are like on sports networks and, you know, news networks, they have their own podcasts because they actually connect much better than if they were on a network. A show like this actually connects more people than if I was just to, you know, make a video and put it on YouTube. But now we're so we're so connected in that effect. That's that one person's decision to say, I'm going to make something where people we have a platform, you know, that we make this. And then we're going to create this technology. But then you have to go back. <clears throat> then you go back. You know, somebody created a, a recorder, a, a video camera. You know, something, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, let's just go with a, like a VCR tape. You remember the big look, you know, VCR, you could record it and then you patch it into your computer or patch it into a mixing board or whatever. You know, that's the that's the father of live stream. You know, that's the father you know, or the mother, you know, regard whatever you want to look at it. But that's where it starts. And then from there, we progress back, we fall back, go further and back in time. Somebody had the vision to create... Uh, another camera you know still camera and then you know now all of us have one of these most of us have one of these one of these little things called smartphones <clears throat> but this was somebody's vision somewhere along the line someone dared to say hey i want to create something that is going to connect the world in ways that you know we can't even imagine you know, there's more to come from this technology right here, from this creation. There's more to come. And that's what should be exciting. You know, that somebody else, another young person or older person or some human being is sitting somewhere at their desk or watching the show or watching some show or, or thinking about creating something new, something that's, you know, smarter than the smartphone. You know, most of us can sit here and go, you mean there's going to be something better than the smartphone? Absolutely. 
absolutely there's going to be something better than the smartphone. You know? Now, most of us used to read books, you know? Like the books in the back shelves there. And then now, most of us read our books on here. Most of us. I haven't quite gotten into that yet, that mode of reading out of off my my little smartphone. But that was somebody's you know, dream, someone's goal, someone's desire, somebody's push, somebody motivated somebody else to create that. That's the butterfly effect. That is when a progression of things move through time, create a cocoon effect, create, you know, where that thing is nursed and then from nursed and then it grows and then it hatches and then it pushes through in the butterfly and it comes out. And then again, it happens again. But, you know, we give credit usually to the guy who actually creates it. But before that guy created it, there was a whole team of people who were working on it. But since that person is the person in front, sometimes we give them credit. And you know what? Sometimes that credit's not from there. You know, just, you know, Bill Gates is a good example, too. You know, he, you know, was working out of a garage. You know, there was already a computer before he was there. The only thing what he created was a platform that would run those computers. And those platforms, you know he instilled them into those computers so these people are creating there's constantly there's other there's other uh, browsers or other tech not technologies there's other you know things that run computers as well but you know sometimes when you're the first sometimes when you're on top of it you get noticed first and then you make the deals there's when you start to study and you start to become a little bit of a historian you start to understand you know what happens i love you too laura <laughs> you know you know, we start to, we start to, you know, create, you know, one decision, you know, can make change the world. You know, I remember, here's an example. When Cheryl's cookies, for example, Cheryl's cookies, somebody, you know, she was making cookies from her house. And this woman's making cookies from her house and selling them to her friends. And, you know, that, that effect you know, changed her life, but it wasn't the effect that changed her life for baking the cookies. It was the word that came out of somebody else's mouth, the encouragement that came from somebody's mouth and said, these cookies are amazing. You should sell them. Maybe she never thought about those at that time to sell her cookies, but you know, that decision, that one decision changed her world and the world for a lot of other people. <clears throat> Maybe it's not a, a grandiose change, but now her cookies she has stores now she has her cookies on airplanes and she's probably doing pretty well for herself but there's a lot of stories like that that can happen that i could share with you but i find it really interesting how human beings are creating beings we're creating beings. we're constantly creating and those decisions that we create move us forward into the next realm so now here we are we have the opportunity here as humans right here everybody who's on the show listening has the opportunity to empower other people, to empower themselves, or to, you know, tear somebody down. You know, and I guarantee you, building them up or tearing them down, you will affect the things that will happen in their lives and the things in your friendships and how you will work together or how you will move and navigate. Right now, I'm here to encourage you to do the best you can with the tools that you have in your, in your arsenal, in your mind. And everything starts here. And every decision we make, every decision that you walk out that door and you move forward, you change the world. It doesn't matter if you go right or left or forward, you change it. You will be moving into those directions. Now, for some of us, that's too much. For some of us, that's that's too much stuff to a burden to carry. But sometimes we just live normal lives. But yet we in our normal lives, we affect the world. We do. And it's okay. It's okay to affect the world because you're going to affect it regardless of not, because I guarantee you somebody else is going to affect your world. Okay. When you can't pay your phone bill, you know, that affects your world. But it also affects the world of other, you know, other people, because other people have to carry the burden of you not paying your bills and such and such. One person does change the world. One decision changes the world. So what kind of butterfly are you? What kind of effect are you creating in your lives? Can you sit back and really look at in the moments in your time in your life where you said, you know, I'm better now because I made this decision. I'm better now because of that. Or that wasn't a very good decision. Even if it wasn't a good decision, you have the opportunity to move into a new reality, a new space, a new place. You know, so 
even like kind of like World War Two and World War One, those had effects. You know, Archduke Ferdinand, when he was assassinated, you know, but most people don't know he wasn't assassinated right away. He was actually there was an attempt prior to. And he was on his way to go see the wounded, you know, people who were hurt in that. And he took the wrong turn and he got killed. And, of course, you know, they declare war on each other. And the next thing, you know, history, there it is. But that's how how thin the threads are. How thin the threads are. Now, I'm going to do something. I'm going to bring something up here, you know, and I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know if it's factual. I don't know. I just know how I perceived it and how I felt about it and how I felt in my body about it. Our election, you know, our presidential election. Okay. I don't know who's going to win that. Had no clue, had no idea. But a lot of people felt pretty confident that it was going to go one way and it was going to be a positive outcome for one candidate. But then there was a myriad of decisions by other people who decided to interject into the campaigns okay these are effects these are these are the effects that change the outcomes you know when they released all wikileaks released all the emails that was an effect that causes an effect at what level we really truly don't know at this time we have ideas and we have our you know our theories about how that affected the world but there's that effect and then james comney for example his decision to withdraw in the beginning, and then all of a sudden he decides to, you know, pull it back out. That's an effect. That is a cause and effect. That is something that affected the minds and the decisions of certain people. Did it? Can I prove it? I can't. But through my perception, through my rose-colored glasses in my mind, I believe that it did. Now, I was for neither one or the other. My point was, about that decision is how that butterfly effect affects the world. That's how it affects it. That's how literal it is. That's how it is. Now, we can go on and give examples, but I'm giving, those were modern time cause and effects. Those were modern time butterfly effects where one decision altered something. We know something was altered. We just don't know how. There are people who believe that people come back and change the timeline. I don't know if that's true or they've attempted to. You know, there's so much that happens on, on these parallel realms of ours that we don't know how they affect us in this particular realm that we live in. You know, but you really have to have an open mind when you have to think about things like this. You really have to have uh, an, an understanding, an idea that, you know, the, a part of fantasy plays into this, that we have to see it and create it in our minds in order to understand it. It's not easy for people to say, sit there and go, oh, okay, yeah, that, you know. Some people are very little. Some people are very factual. Prove it to me. Let me see it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, there are some things you cannot explain. There's just some things that you just can't, you know, you can't, you can't do anything about. Here, for example, you know, an earthquake that happens in the Pacific Ocean. And that, you know, caused by testing, nuclear testing. Okay. And this was several years ago. They caused the tsunami in the Philippines, you know, they try to downplay it. They try to play it off. They try to say, no, no, it wasn't true. It was an earthquake, blah, blah, blah. But they do exercises there and it caused, it causes a ripple. It caused a ripple, you know, in the timeline, it caused a ripple in that moment. That decision, that one person's decision to test and work and test things altered the course of a hundred thousand people who died on those islands. Because, you know, the tsunami, you know, the water draws back and then the shock wave, you know, the waves, if you know anything about waves, and then it pushes it back and it pushes it back very forcefully. It doesn't look forcefully when you watch it on video. It doesn't look like it's much, but it is. Water is very powerful, but that's, that's a cause and effect. That was a decision that was made by somebody or even Mother Earth. Let's, we'll even say Mother Earth caused an earthquake and that cause, that's a cause and effect. But those people woke up that morning and they didn't realize that that was their last, that was going to be their last breath today, that today was going to be their last day on the planet earth, that today, you know, they get this, that's going to be the last, you know, sunset that they'll watch. Today would be their, the last morning having breakfast on planet earth today. 
And, you know, a lot of us go through life like waiting for tomorrow for things to happen. And, you know, that's fine. You can wait for tomorrow. But tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Okay? It's not. As much as you want it to be. I'm sure the dinosaurs woke up one day and were like, hey, yeah, we're going to have some more, you know, brontosaurus burgers and whatever. And we're going to eat some more trees, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, boom, meteor from the sky. Wipe them all out. You know, it could be it could be a cataclysmic event from the stars. It could be a cataclysm from the earth. It could be a man-made cataclysm. It doesn't even have to be cataclysm. It could just be today's your day to take your last breath. So I'm imploring you guys to to feel and to be connected with other people. And I know it's hard sometimes because, you know, we carry a lot of wounded parts of us. There's a lot of us inside of here who are not healed. And some of us are not willing to heal. It's the moment's not correct for us or the situation's not, you know, ideal. But there are no ideal moments. There really aren't. At some point, you have to take, grab yourself and say, hey, you know what? If it's going to be, it's going to be up to me. But that's difficult sometimes. But your decision to stay where you're at also is yours. It also will cause an effect of how you're going to have outcomes and how your outcomes are going to play. Some are good. And some people are very content and very happy where they're at. I'm not here to tell you that you have to change, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just here to remind you, you know, live the best you can and honor yourself the best you can and honor those who you love the best you can. And, you know, and then create healthy limits and boundaries with those who you don't really know and those who are around you who are connected with you in, in, in an acquaintance way. You know, the only way you get to meet people is by meeting them. And, you know, not everybody has the same values as you or me or whoever. We all come from different schools, from different backgrounds, different ideas. But, you know, in the end, we all bleed. We all bleed the red blood, you know. The type might be different, but it's red blood. We all breathe the same air, you know. We all have to go to the bathroom. We all have to eat. All of us are connected to this earth, to this mother, and all of us affect her. And she affects us too. And how how she affects us is probably more detrimental to us than how we affect her. She adjusts. We have a hard time adjusting because sometimes as human beings, we have a little bit of arrogance about us and believe that, you know, we are in big control and we can do anything and we can bomb whoever we want. And that's not going to feel affect anybody. You know, the decisions that were made before us and the decisions of dropping bombs and testing. And, you know, I'm going to say something, you know, these tests of nuclear weaponry, you know, hydrogen bombs and all these things that are being tested around the world and in our deserts, in outer space, you know, that has an effect. It has an effect. It has an effect. I can't say it. I can't stress that even more. It has an effect. You know, if you don't believe it does, then I don't know what to tell you. But that it has an effect. It pollutes our water, pollutes our airs pollutes the land you know we just can't sweep it under the carpet oh yeah it's over there oh it's in the desert oh you know and then we contaminate the aquifers that we can't see and then you know what happens well we mutate as human beings we have to mutate we we change we have to adapt to our environment some of us are good at that some of us are not and some of us perish some of us end up with cancer. Some of us end up with lymphoma. Some of us end up with different types of ailments and diseases because somebody else's cause affects our lives. So even the garbage that you throw out every day, that has to go somewhere. We cause it, we create it, and then we dump it, and then it affects that region. It affects the people who live there. That person becomes angry because it smells like crap every day. And, you know, that person decides he's going to go to work and he's not feeling good. You know, everything, there's so fine threads throughout the universe. All over. So to sit there and think that you don't matter and to think that you are not important 
You know, I'm here to say you're, you're valuable to every human being on this planet is valuable. There's 7.5 billion people and they're all valuable. Now, do we all get our, our wishes and our grants and things we want? To some degree, we do. Even on a subconscious level, you know, things are happening. Things are playing out. Things are, are happening. Things are moving into places, you know, that we don't even understand. You know, even the law of attraction plays into the butterfly effect and the cause and effect. Because the thing that you think about the most is what you end up becoming. The thing that you end up receiving. The thing that you transmute yourself to. You become that. You don't even think about it sometimes. It's so subtle because you live day by day doing the same thing over and over. We're creatures of habit, you know. We're kind of neurotic sometimes about our behavior. We do things and we think we're, we do the same things over and over and over and, and expect to have different results. On occasion, you might have a different result. But you know what? Most of the time, there, you don't, there is no other result. So, you know, ask yourself, where are you at? Are you the caterpillar? Are you the butterfly? Are you the larva? Are you in the cocoon? You know, how are you, how are you affecting your world? Because your world does affect you. You know, your world affects you. The world around you affects you. If you don't have a job, that affects you. You know, for example, if you don't, if you're not active, you're not producing and you're not inside, you know, working and you're not producing, that affects you. It affects how you eat. It affects how you live. It affects where you live, who you live with, what you live with, how are you going to move into time? You know, those, those cause and effects affect us. We're constantly be are constantly be affected by everything. Now, I'm not here to tell you, hey, well, you got to be manage all that. There's a lot to manage, the cause and effect of life. You know, to think about constantly what you is affecting you could be kind of drive you kind of crazy. So, but the point is to understand that you know we're all connected, we're all related. Even though we may not like each other, we may not understand each other. We're all one in this game. We're all, I am you, you are me. We're all, we're, we're, we are. I'm just another version of what you want to be or not, don't want to be, you know, vice versa. You know, that's the cool thing about looking in the mirror. You look at the mirror and you, you don't have to own that. You don't have to be that. So, but whatever you do, it doesn't matter what you do. You give a smile. Here's an example. Here's an example today. My father and I went to the store. And we were asking questions because we had a little little coupon book to Harbor Freight. And the cashier was so put off by us asking questions. And, you know, her face and her scowl was just like, you know, she, I mean. And then she wonders why people were treating her bad. Well, because she wasn't very friendly. You know, finally somebody said something to her. We didn't say anything. We just observed her. And we're like, you know, what's wrong with her, you know? But the next guy. He's like, what's wrong? What's up your butt? And basically what he said, you know, have a little respect. You know, I spend a lot of money here every day, blah, blah, blah. I went on and on. She apologized, but it was a half apology. But regardless, that was an effect. That was a cause. He was observing. He saw and he noticed. So every day we're always moving through time. So, you know, uh, here on Facebook too, you know, sometimes I post things. And, you know, sometimes I, I notice the things when I ask, you know, when I ask a question, people respond pretty well. But when I start to get into the place where it's not necessarily a, a pretty thing that I'm posting, you know, I, I get different results. And sometimes I don't get any results. But I find when we're, we're more in the positive frame of mind, you know, and we have the right to be negative. We have the right to vent. We have the right to express our feelings and emotions because we are, we're still human beings. You know, we're a spirit you know, inside of our bodies experiencing through this body. This body is, is temporary, but this body, even though it's temporary, we have to take care of it. We have to own it. We have to, you know, it's a temple, you know, and our temple is just as, our spiritual temple is just as important as our physical temple because this physical temple is what houses, you know, what's holding this, the spiritual side of us. They work together, you know, and you know, the mother earth is the same way. She has a spirit inside of her and she's also you know, has her body as well. And we can feel it. We can see it. That we're all part of this, this, this big, this big butterfly effect. We all affect the world. We all 
by our little decisions and by our our decisions to say yes or no or maybe affect the world. Our decisions to cross the street or not cross the street affects the world. Our decision to push the snooze button affects the world. You know, it, it's crazy to think about, but it does. Think about how many times you made one decision that bettered your life. I mentioned that earlier in the show, you know, to either, you know, have a breakup or, or date somebody or get a divorce or get married and how that changed the world. For example, my sister got married just yesterday. It was her birthday too. Now her life is with her husband. And now my brother, who she worked for, now she's decided to work in her husband's business versus my brother's business. That affects the outcome of my brother's business. Now he has to find a new employee. He has to move forward. You know, he lost a valuable employee and his own sister, our sister. But she also wanted to move into a place where she knew herself, where she was connected with, you know, you know, the love of her life. And she wanted to be moving into space that's valuable to her as well. So all those decisions for her to move on. Now she's opening up her own little place you know, in Florida and congratulations to them. But now she moves into a whole new realm of, of existence, a whole new realm of creation. And as my brother as well, he can, he can either complain, cause issues about it, or he can grow as well and move into a space where he can create and he can, you know, do something that's positive. So, you know, yesterday I helped my dad, you know, if I made the decision not to help my dad, I, you know, none of us would have lost sleep. We would have moved forward and whatever, but I wouldn't have had that opportunity to take those pictures I took today of him, you know, yesterday of him working, you know, him posing and goofing and silly and being funny together and having one that moment with my dad, helping him lay that plumbing through the walls of the building and working together. You know, I wouldn't have had that experience if I hadn't made the decision. If I would have said no, I would never have seen that per se because you know, my, my mind, my perception says, if I go to my dad's, I'm going to have to work and we're going to work hard. But I went into it thinking of it fun, enjoying seeing my father, seeing my mother, you know, my, I don't know when I'm going to see my dad. Maybe I'll not see my dad tomorrow. Maybe he, he might die. You know, those things cross my mind because as the world goes and as we move forward, you know, we have to dis decide, make decisions. Irisikwi, which my friend here, Lilijana posted just now, Yurisikwi means gratitude in Quechua, in the language, to be grateful for those precious moments we have. Even those moments that we think are hard and detrimental sometimes, sometimes those are the most the most great and the most powerful lessons we learn, you know, when we have a failure, when we have a moment of, um, you know, when we're not clear, it puts us into a place of clarity. Yurisikwi, okay, it just means that, gratitude. And, you know, gratitude is important. So when we go through the butterfly effect and the cause and effects and karma and all those things, we can name it. We can call it whatever you want to call it. You know, instant cause and effect, instant karma. You know, they do exist because when we do something, we push on something, we get some kind of resistance or we get something that moves us either way. So I was really grateful to be able to hang out with my dad, be with my mom for a while and, you know, put into effect the things that he taught me over the years and the things that we worked together on that project, you know, and we finished it in what, three hours laying pipe through building, boom, boom. But we, but we were efficient because we've worked together before and it's almost like left hand, right hand. He knows what I'm doing, he, you know, and that was really cool. And you don't always have that with everybody. And so that was a moment of the butterfly effect, that one decision to go and to be there with my dad and to be, you know, next to him and work with him and be with my mom. That decision panned out to be really good because I saw him again today, you know, and we hung out today. I took him to his doctor's appointment. I hung out. I got to learn a little more about him. I got to little get to gain a little knowledge, you know, talk about, you know, the past a little bit, reminisce, laugh, joke, you know, dream and create and have ideas about things that he would still like to do, even though he's 70 some years old, there's, he's still dreaming. He's still believing. 
And, you know, that was beautiful to see that. But if I had made the decision two days ago to stay home or do something else, I would not have that opportunity. You know, that 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 moment in time with him, that now. By accepting that now moment, I won. You know, I got to share with my father one more memory with him. You know, he's important to me. And, you know, it didn't matter where I was because the only thing that mattered was that place, that basement, that moment with him. To sit there with him, to look him in the eyes and, you know, laugh when I couldn't reach the pipe because I was too short. You know, he's a little bit taller than me. I said, you got to do this one because I can't reach it. We were laughing at that. You know, I'm blessed with, uh, I wasn't blessed with the vertical, you know, part of me, but I can, I can jump and I can run pretty quick. But, you know, we, we got that moment. There's, there's something very precious about that. For me, that was super precious. That was something that was magical. And part of me already knew that, that when I'm with my dad, that that was going to be. Because I know in my mind, the back of my mind, that his time is more limited than mine. You know, you know, genetically or whatever, you know, age-wise, since he's older than me, I know that my time, you know, his time is dwindling down faster than mine is. But there's no guarantee because, you know, I could fall over and never wake up, you know, again. That's, that's the preciousness of life, you know. Sometimes we, we're so hung up on things and so mad at things and so mad at people, you know. And we can be mad at people all we want, but live while you're, if you want to be mad, but live at the same time. Don't just be angry at everything and everyone. That's too easy to do. It's too easy to be angry at people. It's too easy to be pissed off and, and mad at the world. So what? Move on. You know? I guarantee you, if you have an attitude of gratitude and, you, and you're and you positive and you want to move forward, and I'm not saying you have to be positive every time, but if you have a gratitude of attitude and you're moving into that space, you're going to get a lot more results. You're going to get a lot more honey coming your way, you know, than poop with a bunch of flies on it, okay? So when you go out there and you're working and you're, and you're motivated, you're pumped and you're excited, you know, even be grateful that you wake up the next day and you have a breath. Okay, but I'm sick. Fine, you're sick. You'll get over it. You'll move forward. But I don't have legs. Fine. There's another person, you know, who doesn't have a leg or doesn't have an arm. You know, be blessed that you have two hands or two feet. You know, be grateful and be thankful that when you know you have these abilities, there are other people who wish they had. There are other people who wish they could be on this podcast and learn. There are people who don't even know that these things exist. There are people who are here who don't even know what a podcast is. There are people who don't even know what a computer is. There are people who think they need a computer. You know? You know, I had friends who, you know, one decision changed her life last week. You know, now she's going through the struggles of learning, you know, from those lessons. And hopefully she does. And hopefully she gets into a place where, you know, she has an understanding. But it's not always so easy. All of us have stories about things that happen to us. All of us have stories. I know I have stories where I made a decision to hit the brakes instead of proceeding and at that moment somebody barrels through the red light you know but the thing is we can't live to die we have to live to you know enjoy and, and to experience it's easy to you know to die from here up there are people who die from here up you know and there are people who in their mind they've already given up because in a lot of the times it's 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 the programming it's what's been told to them it's what they've heard it's what you know they've constantly played back in their head over and over and over and you know the way to get out of here is to be have gratitude for the small things in your life the little things it doesn't matter you know because in the end, when you decide when it's your day, when you're going to take your last breath, you're not going to worry about money. You're not going to be thinking about money. You're not going to be thinking about cars. You're not going to be thinking about, you know, anything that's, you know, materialistic. You're going to think about all the things that you didn't do, 
or the things that you didn't say and the things that you wish you have done and the things that you wish you would have like been able to do, you know, had experienced and you didn't. There are many people who live for the bucket list, you know, and I understand the bucket list concept, but you know what? There's a time and a place for everything, but we don't know when that's, when our time's going to be. But if you foster the dreams, if you foster the, the, the feelings, the emotions to get you where you want to be, this world's amazing. This world is a playground. This world is beautiful. And if you want to get out of it, you have to put into it. You have to put it out to the universe that that's what you want. In order to get the effects that you want from that, you have to put it out. And, you know, sometimes it comes very quickly. You know, and sometimes for other people, you know, it doesn't. You know, I posted the other day, you know, something about, you know, I don't know what I post exactly, but it was about somebody's calling. Somebody's waiting for you to visit. You know, if you remember that. So, so some of those you follow. You know, I posted that because I felt a draw to reconnect with part of my family. If by that post, my dad posts something back being funny. He said, oh, your mom's waiting for you to come visit her. The funny thing was, I was already at my mom's visiting her. So <laughs> he started laughing. He came downstairs. And from that moment, after I visit with them, I called my son and I said, hey, I want to see if you're home. He's like, yeah, what's up? He goes, what's going on? Oh, I just want to come over and visit you and the boys. And so I went to go visit my grandsons. And then, you know, his other two boys that are part of the family as well from his wife, his his wife's previous marriage so i get to visit all four of the boys and them but that decision i don't know what will what will happen i didn't go there in the intentions to make anything happen but that decision will affect something it will open up feelings emotions and challenge. i got to see my grandson you know we were fist pumping and high five and you know he's only he's not even he's two but he remembers you know he knows who i am and you know i want him to remember and not forget in the little chocho, you know, he was excited to see me too. He was a little nervous because he hasn't seen me too much. But, you know, and sometimes I have difficult moments with my own son. But the point is, is to keep plugging and keep working and keep trying to, you know, foster the relationship there. Even when it's hard, even when it's difficult. Because if I don't and I just give up, then I'll, I know personally in my mind that it would bother me. And that's why I can't allow that in my mind. I don't want to go to my grave knowing that I didn't try to make things right with my family, to make things right with the people I love. There's sometimes you can't and you have to move forward. And all you can do is send them positive energy and love and hope the best for them. And that's okay. You know, so all you folks who are here online, a lot of you I've, I've met online. You know, a lot of you here I've met in person. A lot of you I may never meet in person, but I'll meet you here online. But the thing is, you've affected my life. I've affected your life. We're moving into a space of understanding. We're moving into a space of, you know, connection, moving into a space of love, hope, you know, peace, desires, you know, and inspiration and motivation. We move into those spaces when we have like-minded people. You only thing you really truly need to do in this world, in this life, is to look around you and see who you are hanging out, who the people you keep close to you. And that usually will give you an indication of what you're kind of like and what you're attracting to you. I believe I attract some very beautiful, amazing people into my life because that's what I want to be. I want to be in attract i want to be the person that attracts beautiful amazing people into me and i want to be an amazing beautiful person so those people they all come around they all they're all part of me i'm part of them there's no separation but when i also get down in that funky place i attract those people as well you know excuse me you know it's it's that's that's cause and effect. That's, that is the law of attraction. We're always attracting. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you intentionally are thinking about it or unintentionally. Thinking. You're always attracting. That's just a law of the universe. That's just how it works. 
the cool part is the law of vibration when it plays into effect with that is that you can vibrate to a certain frequency, a certain attitude to attract certain type of things into your life. You know, that person who became a millionaire, you know, one day may become a billionaire just because of the idea and the belief that they can. That person who instantly healed themselves believed that they can heal themselves because they heard it somewhere else. Oh, I can heal instantly because somebody else did. You know, the person who, you know, ran the four minute mile, it was impossible one time, but eventually after he ran it, dozens of other people ran it. You know, when you are the person who lays the foundation, you are the person who creates, you know, you know, you're the person who doesn't have that limiting belief and that person who believes they can do anything, accomplish anything. You affect a lot of people. You affect someone's life, even if it's one person. You've all, every single person on this podcast has affected the lives of everybody. You know, everybody here, everybody here who's popping in, you all have opened up hearts, opened up wounds, opened up, you know, ideas, opened up things that you fostered beautiful things that come out of people. But we are also as guilty as creating limiting beliefs in people because we had them at that time but we've grown we've moved and we moved into a space now that we understand that whatever comes out of our mouth can affect another person's life you know self-talk is powerful talk and so everything all these things that i talk about they're all interconnected law of attraction law of vibration you know self-talk butterfly effect cause and effect karma you know the chaos theory all these things all these things you know, keys to success, they all go hand in hand some way. They all move together. They all navigate together. They're all in this together. And that's the cool thing about it. That's the cool thing about it. We never stop creating, ever, never, ever, ever. Even when you're laying in your deathbed, you're creating. You're creating ideas that comes out of your mouth to say, I wish I had done more. I wish I'd said more. Somebody else listening to that conversation going, oh my God, that guy said, I wish I'd done more. That means I better go do more. I better go do this. Just like Mother Earth, she's creating also. There's new life every day being born on this planet that we haven't seen yet, but it's there. There's new bacteria. There's new germs. There's new viruses. There's new everything. As she grows, we grow. As we mutate, she mutates. We mutate. The human species is mutating and changing. We are eternally changing. We're changing in a spiritual way. We're changing in a physical way. And our bodies are adapting. You know, with all, for example, for all the pollution and stuff, our body adapts to that over generations. We start to be accustomed. You know, we start to change. That's what we do. Human beings are, are good at that. Because we want to live. The next generation wants to live. The next generation of, like my grandkids, the next group, you know, there's parts and pieces of me moving through the timeline of history, timeline of the world. And that's going to be going on just like my great, great, great grandfathers. That stuff's moving through. That cause and effect. That decision to love somebody, to mate with somebody, to that decision to be part of somebody, to be, to join somebody's family. You know, but at the same token, there are moments in people in time who were not created because of someone's decision or because, you know, wars and, you know, famines and disease and stuff. That's the fine threads, folks. We're all living on this fine type rope, this fine thread. This fine thread is unseen and seen. Some of you, a decision to me to push the f friend button to friend you was the decision that changed my life. What if I hadn't changed that, pushed that button? Well, I would have another existence. It would be another effect. I would be causing other. You know, my friend here, Lejana, I friended her. She accepted the request. And now we're good friends, for example. You know, and we keep each other positive. She sends beautiful things. I send things. And we talk and we share. And those things inspire people. And that inspiration is created within us. You know, my friend 
Adriana, David, Mark, and all those people, they all inspire me. I hopefully inspire them. And they cause an effect. They cause the butterfly wings to open up. So, and that's really all I have for today. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the topic that I covered today. Uh, it's one of my favorites. But, um, yeah, if there's anything that you want to talk about in the future, anything that you want me to, a, a Q&A session with me, you know, please get a hold of me. Send me an email at iggygarcia.com. Just go to the website there. But um, I want to thank everybody for being online and, you know, sharing your thoughts. I, I read some of your things. Um, I don't usually read too much because then I get distracted and I have these long pauses. But I want to thank everybody who took the opportunity in the time out of their busy schedules to listen. You're all precious to me as well. And Irisikwi, Aho, Otoaki Yasin, you know, Terry as well. Thank you for being on here. And I'll go back and I'll read all your comments and, you know, comment back, give a little hearts. But um, you're the inspiration too because it makes me want to do the show. It makes me want to share, you know, my life. You know, even if, if it changes one person's perception of the world for something better or something more positive, then I'm doing my job. And the things that you guys share with me, you know, in private or on your Facebook pages, your timelines, you know, it does, it affects me and I'm grateful for that. So this is, I'm done for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Iggy Garcia Live, and um, I will be back in a couple weeks. I hope you guys uh, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. It's coming up. Let's stay connected. Let's get some drum circles rolling again, and uh, let's get to Serbia. Let's see if I can get there here in 2018. I'd like to get there and uh, drum with you guys, and that would be a blast. And so I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Be well, take care, and have a wonderful time. Adios.